Good morning, New York City. Nice time to be in New York. End of April, beginning of May. Same goes for Paris and all the big cities. This uh, whole late or middle spring is, is the best time, I think. Uh, so, enjoy it. As far as uh, the markets go, very, very quiet today. <clears throat> we're in a little bit of a uh, holding pattern here. It looks like we're waiting for some um, U.S. data to come out. And we're waiting for the month end flows to start flowing through. A couple things on my mind here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let's go down to crude. Bias alert here. Um, I don't like cars. I don't like Saudi Arabia. I don't like oil. I don't like plastic. So I do obviously love selling crude. Uh, so just throwing the bias alert in there. But this setup looks pretty decent, irregardless of biases. 6710. Could probably slap some out at 6723 now. 24 the low today in Europe. We're down 1%. Uh, no real trigger on this, so you got to be a little bit careful. But what we're looking for is the same sort of pattern we had in January. Sort of rounding top. I don't know what you would call it, but exhaustion of an uptrend. An uptrend that then gets pierced. It was 63.70 back then. You may have a day of indecision afterwards, but then you're followed by three or four days down. So if you look ahead here, uh, today we pierce, tomorrow we're indecisive, DOE on Wednesday, they smash it, just using my imagination here, um, so let's get ready for it, let's prepare for it, get the size right, get your stops right, for me personally my stop is going to be above today's high, 68.20, so you got to be careful uh, you know, on your size depending on where your stop has to be. So uh, this is first and foremost on my mind in a day where FX is, is uh, pretty darn quiet. Back to FX. Uh, we're, we're still watching this dollar-yen, and it's been very slow going. We haven't even come remotely close to a new low yet today. Uh, a new low will be confirmation of bearish engulfing from Friday. Uh, we are balancing out against dollar buying at the fix today and also we're balancing out against personal income and the PCE core comes out 2.30 New York time today um, so not a lot to say I mean we're, we're left hand side this dollar yen we're left hand side euro yen because we feel like dollar yen is at risk and we, we do like the fact that there should be some good strong euro selling today at the fix um, but boy it's it's slow going slow and sort of slutty trading nothing really to write home about so keep it light you know there's a lot of ways you could sell this this 200 hour right here might be a nice little point of no return in the euro yen you could take this trend line and run the death knock if you want to be a little more aggressive which comes in at 86 um, but this is not a pinpoint precision trade slutty fade as we say at privateer um, what else we've got cable which is uh, lurking looking down at this uh, 137.15 neckline on this double top. This is one of those incredibly obvious uh, setups. We like some aspect of surprise on these kind of setups typically or else it's usually doesn't work. It looks like to me the fix is going to jam this through which is never really ideal. Keep that in mind. It's been offered all day today in a very sort of subdued way. High's been 92, low's been 27. We're sitting here at 33. But even if you look at the five minute chart, you can just see it's it's just kind of a subdued offered today. I'm just going to advise 
be careful here if it's the fix driving this fix sucks they should do away with the fix anyone who uses the fix I believe uh, needs a slap it's bad for the dealers uh, as we all know we've seen our colleagues get in trouble and it's bad for the clients who obviously don't understand FX if they're using the fix to uh, to execute business. Anyway, I won't go on about that. Blah, blah, blah. Fix, fix, fix. Let's look at some other stuff uh, that's just on my mind since FX, since his month end. Uh, AT&T, 6% <coughs> dividend down here. All my tech friends hate this. They, of course, all hate AT&T. Um, but as a substitute for cash, what we do like to do with AT&T when, when we get to this 55 6% dividend area is to flexibly trade the long side. So the idea goes something like this. You know, you have a certain pool of cash that you would have in a bank account uh, or you want liquid and you dip your toe into AT&T in the low 30s and then it's a tradable low in a sense. You're basically saying my worst case scenario here, I want to try and earn 6% of my money or at least get 6% better average if you're a long-term holder. But what you can do basically and what often happens on these is you move down say 36 and then you move back up to 40. The last time this happened we were the low was 32.38, and as soon as we got up 10%, we just sold it, you know, because um, this is just liquid money, it's just tradable money. There should be a backstop because of this dividend. Um, obviously, the the T-Mobile merger could put some downside into this. Um, but you can be super conservative with this. You could go, you could easily just go on 33, 31, 29, 27 for bits and pieces of AT&T and trade around it and give yourself a better return than cash. So it's basically a very slow tradable bottom. The way we see it, something to think about. Uh, another other things we're thinking about. I just want to mention Tesla again. Uh, some of the team at uh, Privateer are, are um, short Tesla here, and I do like it as a short. I just worry that there are too many shorts out here, and patience is is the word. There's going to be stops above 310, and I think the ideal short here is probably going to be in the 320 to 350 range. I know everyone's like, oh, you're insane. How is Tesla going to go up 10%? Well, Tesla's going to go up 10% precisely because everybody's short. Okay, sermon over on Tesla. Facebook, we're still on the same type of ideas. They crushed it with earnings, but we do still think uh, this $200 top is... We're not going to see this top for years, so... The next short play is the gap fill of 180. So, so we're trying to sell high 170s. The more aggressive or the more you hate Facebook, the earlier you can sell it, although that's not super professional. Um, we're going to be sort of 177, 185 on the short side with a kill above 200. Uh, the sentiment against Facebook now, I think, is real and also the tax implications where the greedy governments around the world are going to want to extract some tax from these guys this is going to hurt their bottom line as well um, but could easily have a good up week this week Apple earnings this week so keep in mind but we do like shorting Facebook as we do like shorting Tesla but we're just being patient as far as professionally driven trades crude now is our number one for the week and then for today we like to be short euro yen uh, but we're conscious that the fix is in play so we're going to be nimble around the fix 
For all of my uh, institutional money friends, enjoy your lunch today, because I know that's where you all are. And good luck next month. And all the rest of us, enjoy the spring weather, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Ciao.